So welcome to the Blogtacular and Thompson webinar. Um, we're live here tonight and I am just waiting for Christian to join me so I can introduce him to you. I'm really, really glad to have all of you join us this evening. I think this is going to be really useful no matter which brand you're pitching, but particularly if you're coming to Blogtacular and you're going to pitch a holiday to Thompson, this is your opportunity to get all of that information out of them. Just going to double check that I've got a couple of things right while everybody arrives. Excuse me while I type. So we're just getting started. Um, there's a couple of you um, joining, and that's brilliant. It's good to see you all here. Hopefully, the reminders have gone out. It is nine nine o'clock. So um, the usual thing: say hello to everybody. You will find in this part of your screen, if you hover your mouse over it, you'll find um, the chat and the Q and A. We'll use the chat throughout the um, webinar, and towards the end, we'll start using the Q and A. Just checking that all of this is working. I'm going to go quickly to Twitter. So, hello, I can see more of you coming online. We're just um, experiencing a tiny problem in that um, my webinar partner isn't able to get online yet. So, you know, live TV. What can what can you do? Um, so, while we get started. Um, if you look over on this side, you should see like a blue square speech bubble with lines on it. That is the chat function. Um, so click that to um, leave your messages. And underneath that, you'll see a blue Q&A. So towards the end of the chat, we will use that Q&A to ask questions. Um, just double checking. That Christian can get in here. Oh, hang on, here he comes. Hey, Christian. Hi, Kat, how are you? I'm good, that wasn't at all nerve wracking. I know. So, ah, where is everybody? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit nervous. So, welcome, Christian. Christian is um, PR manager at Thompson, the holiday company, and he will be joining us at Blogtacular this year. So, we're really thrilled not only to have you guys as a sponsor. But your offer this year is out of this world. Like, do you want to tell us a bit about it? Yeah, sure. We're really excited as well because this is our second year on the trot at Blogtacular. Um, and last year, we came along with an entire beach scene um, for everybody to pose in front of and get into the holiday spirit. And we thought, how can we top that this year? And uh, we thought, well, hold on, we've got our own airline, we've got a whole new fleet of 787 Dreamliners arriving, so why don't we bring a plane to Blogtacular this year? So that's what we decided that's, upon. That's pretty, um, that's pretty fantastic. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, How are we're, you going to get that in the building? We're, we're, we're quietly patting ourselves on, on the back and trying to work out the logistics desperately. But, <laughs> but, but as part of that, um, what we wanted to do is kind of go even bigger and better in every sense um, that we could. Because what happened last year was a result of blog tactics. We got in touch with loads of bloggers, loads of outreach, and that worked for us really, really well. And we want to continue that. And we thought we've got loads of people talking to us about how can I get involved? You know, are there maybe trips I could go on, or how can we work together? What blogging opportunities might there be? And so we really want to invite people in and. And, and break the ice in, in a really fun and informal way. And we thought, what better way to do that than get people talking to us direct? And they can actually come to us direct with their ideas. So we've come up with the idea of instead of an elevator pitch, because we're landing this plane at Blogtacular, we've got um, the airline seat pitch. So literally, you come and sit with us on our, uh, on our plane at Blogtacular in one of the seats, and you tell us why we should be working with you. You know, what ideas have you got? Where would you like to be going in the world and, 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 and talking to the whole blogosphere about? Um, and that's pretty much what we're doing. We're looking for people that we can team up with, that we can work together with um, within the blogging community. And people need to kind of tell us why we should be working with them. And 
if it all worked out, fingers crossed, someone will be going somewhere fantastic to blog for us. That's amazing. And I know when we had our initial meeting, you guys said you wanted to book a year's worth of travel. So we're not just talking one or two holidays. It's not a star prize. We're talking no, no, no. Many pictures are going on holiday. We are trying to get as many people away as possible. It's in our interest. We did something last year called Out of Office, where we reached out to the blogging community and we worked with um, all sorts of different bloggers. Some were kind of well known, like Zanthi. I think you know her quite well, Kat. Yeah, Zanthi, um, who leads our photo walk, did a beautiful trip to Mexico. You should definitely check That's out. right, that's right. And we also worked with some kind of up and coming, not so well known people as well. Um, and that worked out really, really well for us because it meant we got outreach. Um, the bloggers also got fantastic exposure for, for themselves and their blog, and also some great memories and some great trips. Um, so we would try, we would love to team up with as many people who come to us with fantastic ideas. Um, you know, this isn't just one thing. If you've got great ideas, we want to work with you. That's so exciting. I really, you know, I'm totally thrilled. So we've, we've got lots of people joining us here this evening. I'm going to say hello to the people who've joined us as Christian and I have been talking. Um, I just want to let you all know, if you go to this part of your screen, um, you will find there's a blue square speech bubble. You can use that to add chat to the side of your window. So you can chat directly to me as I talk to Christian. You can chat to each other um, and you know you can remind each other you definitely want to be tweeting out some of these tips on the Blogtacular hashtag, seeing as there's no chat this evening. Um, so you can all join the chat. I've said hello. You can say hello to me. That's absolutely fine. Um, we're going to start chatting now in a bit more depth. Um, so the pitches are going to work, but people have two minutes with you at Blogtacular That's right. in which to let you know um, what they, where they want to go, what they're going to blog about, and you know how that content is unique. Is there anything else that people should be including in that pitch? Yeah, I, I, I guess a really good tip would be, as, as well as you know, fantastic ideas, and, and when we talk about ideas, I guess something that's worth pointing out is we want something out of the ordinary. We don't want what everybody else is doing. As everyone knows, that the whole thing about content at the moment, you know, the buzzword, is it, it, it needs to be sticky. It needs to be something that really engages and inspires people. So we don't want just something that you've seen a hundred times over. We want something unique that's utterly you as well. Because never forget, that's why we want to work with bloggers, is because you've got your own voice, which is totally different to a brand's voice. So we want you to be true to yourself. So often I get asked, oh, should I make, I'm, I'm not a travel blogger, can I work with you? My answer to that is absolutely. You, your speciality might be food, your speciality might be style, it might be shopping. All of those elements exist within travel. That's what's so wonderful about it. So you're able to bring your own unique spin and your own unique interest into travel in all sorts of different ways. You don't have to be specifically a travel blogger. Um, the other thing I'd say is a, a really good tip is make sure that you've done a little bit of homework, a little bit of research um, when you come to us with your pitch. Uh, as, as you say, Kat, people have got about two minutes to kind of sell their idea into us as to why they should be going off to, I don't know, Costa Rica or Mallorca or Mauritius or Mexico or wherever it is um, that you know we, we decide upon. Um, but make sure that not only have you got some great ideas that you'd like to, to, to run out with this, but do the homework, have a look to see where we actually operate to, because I can't tell you how many times I have to kind of say, oh, I'd love to do that, but it just won't work, because people say, oh, we've got this great idea about this uh, bar feature we could, we could work on in uh, New York. Yeah. I'd love to do that as well. I love New York myself. However, Thompson doesn't operate there. Um, as most people know, we're famous for our package beach holidays. That's not everything we do by long chalk, but primarily, you know, if, if it's about beach and relaxation, that's where we come into play. So I would say people really need to do a little bit of homework, have a look to see on our website where it is we go to, so then they can start maybe pairing up any ideas they have with the destinations we go to. So they're not coming to us with a, effectively what would be a wasted pitch. Definitely. Oh, excuse me. And we're going to talk more about your destination at the end of the webinar. Okay. Mm, sorry, I just need a drink of water. 
<laughs> I'll do the same. I'll do the same. <coughs> I got overexcited there. Like the thought of New York. I was like, no. Um, so, yeah, we will talk more about some of your destinations and the ones that are maybe um, more appealing to you at the moment. Um, and I would say on the research thing that it would be worthwhile for people looking at, on, at your blog to see what has been blogged before. Because Absolutely. It's not, it's not just coverage on people's blogs that you're looking for, is it? It's coverage for no. your blog. Yeah, no, we're, we're looking, we're always open to how we work with bloggers. Um, so some people prefer just to work on their own blog, which is great because it means we get to talk to other people that perhaps we wouldn't do otherwise. Likewise, we're happy if people want to blog on our blog. Normally, we actually do a bit of a 50-50 where people blog on their own and they'll blog on the, on the Thompson blog as well. So it's a great idea to have a look back over past posts to see the sorts of things um, that we've already covered and also some of the things that have got kind of real traction have really been liked and, and, and shared out. Um, the other thing I'd probably say is if you're trying to get something really unique and, and, and new, um, again, it might be worth having a look to see uh, either online or even if you pop into your local kind of Thompson travel shop, what are the, are, are the new products? And when I say the new products, that means things like we've introduced last year, Thompson Scene, which is a whole new kind of product line for kind of cocktail quaffing 30 somethings who still like to go out. <laughs> um, I like to try and imagine myself in that demographic, but I'm just on the wrong side now. Um, we've also got things like Thompson Iceland. So we've got things that are brand new and a little bit different. So people might want to think about those as well, perhaps haven't had so much coverage that would that clearly as a brand we'd like to talk about and be quite exciting for, for for the blogging community to talk about as well definitely and that's really exciting that you mentioned iceland i know we're not meant to be talking about destinations till later on but so your iceland trips are they um operating during the summer or are they there during the winter months as well when the northern lights are more no it, it, it's going to be a, a new winter based program and absolutely it's, it's all about the northern lights in fact the, the beauty of what we're doing in Iceland is every single holiday includes a, a kind of a, a tour that will go Northern Lights hunting. So, and it, it's across the winter months, so you'll actually get to see, fingers crossed, because you can never guarantee these things, but nine times out of 10, you'll get to see the Northern Lights and all their splendor. And plus there are, I think, included with it, within the, um, the offering that we have for Iceland, you've got the, the Blue Lagoon, which is really famous, and there are certain elements that are included. So not only do you get a holiday, you get a little mini kind of tour of all of Iceland's best bits included within the within price. That's really interesting. Like I am a bit of a solar flare watcher. Um, and I do think like when you think about um, how you communicate via Instagram and via video that a trip to Iceland, like there are so many possibilities for that kind of pitch. And, and, and I guess that's the other thing is when you're thinking about the pitch, as well as talking about maybe how you might feature something on your own blog or on the Thompson blog, it's also we're really interested in, 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 in content in its entirety and where it could go. You might even come up with an idea that's for, I don't know, a Pinterest board that we work on collaboratively together. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be 100% focused on blogging, although that's our kind of passion and what we've really got into it the last few years you know we're open to other content channels as well um so if your thing is video if um i don't know maybe you're into just doing uh gifs or means i don't know whatever it is that, that, that kind of floats your boat that really gets you fired up and, and 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 what you're you're really good at then come to us with those ideas and going back to the iceland point uh, and, and anything that's kind of new to to our world that might be an interesting angle to go in on as well because obviously we want to talk about what's new so and, and often our new stuff is our more exciting stuff as well so we talked about iceland there that's something you don't necessarily think thompson would kind of do because no, we know from, from I our think, beach stuff i think our stereotypes are firmly rooted in kind of the 80s package holiday absolutely and I think part of the story with bloggers is rewriting that story for brands like Thompson. Absolutely, and that's really something that we're keen to investigate and, and, and try and get that message out there. Because as you as you say, um, we, we have got a really proud, long heritage, you know, with the biggest um, package holiday company in the UK, and we have been, you know, since uh, the mid seventies, and we've got roots going back to the nineteen sixties. But a lot of what people kind of remember us for 
is just the kind of you know two weeks in Spain, which we do and we do really well. But we are so much more than that. You know, we have cloud forest tours in Costa Rica. We can send you to India and go on the Golden Triangle tour and take in all of India's uh, best bits. We introduced Mauritius a while ago, which I got to to visit myself. It's absolutely amazing. I don't just mean the tropical beaches. Trust me, they are great. But <laughs> Um, but, but but beyond that, you know, you've got such a rich and diverse um, culture going on there. When I was over there, I got to learn how to make um, uh, Mauritian curries, for example. So there's all sorts of different angles. It's not just about the beach. We are so much more than just beach. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as, you know, a, an end-to-end -end travel provider. Um, and hopefully there'll be something in there that will prick the bloggers' fancy as well and their own interests that they can team something up with. Definitely. So let's go back to talking about research. Now, I know from the countless hours I've spent researching my own pitch that you have destinations on your site that you don't currently travel to. What's the best way for people to check that? Is it by um, putting in sample dates and seeing what, what comes out? Yeah, well, to be honest, if, if it's on our A to Z destination list, you can be guaranteed that we go there. It might not be that we go there here and now because we're in the middle of our summer season and operation, but it might be that we'll be going um, in the winter time or even next summer because we always work in the future. I always find it really confusing as to what the real date is because I'm always a year ahead of myself. Um, but if it's on our A to Z list on our, on our website, that means we will be going there either now or at some point in the future. So the website is the most up-to-date resource that they'll be able to find where we're going to and where we will be going to as well. Okay, brilliant. Um, so when we're talking about what people need to include in the pitch, are you interested in people's follower numbers or is that secondary to the quality of their content? Uh, I'd be lying if I said we weren't interested. We are interested because, you know, we, we, we're a brand, we want to talk to as many people as possible. But we have a mantra at Thompson and it's so, so key to everything we do. Content is king um and as i said before we've worked with some big name bloggers you know will taylor mr bright bizarre is someone that, that that we've worked with in the past but equally you know there, there was someone who won the cosmo blog awards and she was a relatively unknown that we're kind of working with and, and want to do more things with her followers you know is it, uh, it's pretty small but what she generates is really really interesting sticky content and particularly if we put that on our own blog we've already got a set amount we've got about 400,000 readers every month so we've already got an audience that we can put stuff out to if we can team up with great um, viewers elsewhere great but if not not a problem we can we can kind of carry that side of things we're really after inspirational um, intriguing um, and not done before ideas um, and if you would like to read it and if it would get you fired up and would make you want to go somewhere, that's kind of a, a good litmus test, I guess. Sure. Um, I'm just going to put a quick housekeeping message out. Guys, I can see that in the Q&A there are some comments there. I can see some questions and we will definitely be getting to them. But could we please keep the Q&A purely for questions that I'm going to ask later? If you want to just say hello to people, um, it's two or three icons up on this side of the um, Screen, use the chat function. It's the blue speech bubble with the white lines on it. Um, just put your general chat in there. I'm looking at that the whole time. I'll come to the questions section towards the end of the webinar. So do keep putting your questions in there. If we don't answer them, I will be asking them at the end. Um, so thinking about, like we just talked about if you've got small followings, but we do have attendees who might not have a classic blog. Mm -hmm. They might have like a really good social following, they might make um, YouTube videos. If somebody doesn't have a blog, can they still pitch to you? Absolutely. Um, what you've just mentioned there, if, if someone's natural home is actually YouTube and they're used to making uh, short films or they're a vlogger, come and talk to us. We, we started out in, in terms of outreach um, with blogging about five years ago. And that's kind of where our natural home is. But we know that in, even in that short time, the you know social media has exploded in a variety of ways that people didn't even think would exist 
this time five years ago. So we are open to all sorts of different channels, all sorts of different content. Um, I guess what would be really clever is if you are, if, if, if you're coming up with a pitch idea that maybe ticks off one, two or three different avenues, well, that's all the better for us. That would work brilliantly for us. Um, but I don't want people to be put off if your natural habitat is YouTube, then come and talk to us about why you're fantastic in YouTube, and why your idea would be best suited there. If, if, if you're more at home in traditional blogging, come and talk to us about why that would be the best route in. If you're, you know, you love Instagram and you love blogging, then tell us why that, that combo would work best. We're open to, to all sorts of ideas here. See, that's what I really love. And I know that from the um, Blogtacular ticket holder group, several people have said that they feel nervous about pitching. And, you know, I hope that during this chat, people are getting to know you a bit and getting to see that you guys are really open and really excited about what our community have to offer. Absolutely. Um, and and what, what one thing I'd say about that, if people are at all nervous, I'm hoping, well, I'd like to think I'm coming across as kind of, kind of approachable, but I'll be turning up on the day um, with uh, my partner in crime at work, um, Nikki, Nikki Jones, who works um, on the uh, content uh, side of digital at Thompson. And she's absolutely nuts. Uh, she's always got a smile on her face. Um, and together we're, we're, we're uh, a little bit of a, well, a bit like our logo, big smiley faces, I guess. <laughs> um, but we're also coming along with someone from our social media team who's used to interacting with people on a literally a daily basis. So, oh. Um, yeah, so, so she, she's really used to uh, social interaction in all of its forms. And on top of that, we don't take ourselves too seriously here. Um, last year, um, we got um, everyone dressed up against our beach scene with sombreros and, and, and uh, sunglasses, including ourselves, this <laughs> year, in, in order to celebrate the fact that we're landing a plane at Blogtacular. We will be coming uh, along with um, our cabin crew uh, pillbox hats and our captain's hats, and people get an opportunity to, to, to dress up and have a selfie in a completely different style this year. And, and we'll be taking part in that as well. So we don't take ourselves too seriously. Um, and we don't want anyone to feel that, you know, that they can't pitch or they should be intimidated. It's not, it's a chat. I say airline seat pitch, it's a chat. Come and talk to us. We're trying, we're trying to make it sound more exciting than it is. You've got a two minute chat <laughs> why you're gonna go on holiday. And what I would say to people who are feeling nervous and who are thinking, oh, should I pitch, should I not pitch? What I think is you currently have no holiday. <laughs> you could. You could have a great holiday with Thompson. Absolutely, and and and, 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 and that, two minutes, and maybe wear a hat. And, and and that's precisely what's happened in the past. You know, when we, whether it be Blog Tacky or some of the other blogging events we go to, it's amazing just from talking to people how things come about. And all of a sudden, oh, we've got an idea. Someone else has got an idea. Right, let's work together. Here you go. You're off to. Um, what, 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 I'm just trying to think of places we've sent people over the last year. Mexico, Mexico, um, Thailand, Mauritius, um, Marrakesh. Yeah. We've sent people on some really cool cruises as well. I mean, traditionally, that might not be something that most bloggers think, well, a cruise, is that for me? It seems, you know, not in my sphere of holiday vision. We've sent people on some really amazing cruises to um, places in Central um, America, like Panama. Mm. Um, and all of a sudden, they've come back cruise converts. So there's all sorts of different things out there that people can talk about. It's about so it's about getting excited about the sorts of things you get excited about yourself, I guess. You just need to be true to yourself, and it's just a chat. And if you're being true to yourself, it's really straightforward. There's nothing to worry about. We don't bite. <laughs> well, I've heard otherwise, but <laughs> I can really see the um, benefit of a cruise from a content point of view, especially if you're visiting maybe five or six cities. Mm -hmm. Five or six different posts that's five or six different um, ways to tell a story you can really stretch that content out over a couple of months and you could have like a series on touring Central America you of know, course. 24 hours in Panama City and what have you and I can see that from the point of view of a blogger as being like a really worthwhile trip because you have that ability to take a lot of content from one event 
Absolutely. And also just being purely selfish as a blogger, if you get to go on one of these trips, you get to see potentially somewhere that you may never have planned to see or wasn't on your immediate bucket list. And all of a sudden you've seen somewhere totally new and you've got a different taken a different perspective on it. And, and, and all of a sudden it becomes one of your new favorite places. And, and as you say, when for a cruise, for example, if, if you were to take that as an idea, as you say, you normally get to see about uh, six or seven different places over the space of a week. Um, and that's before you factor in things like all of the, uh, the spa coverage you could get because most of the cruise ships have amazing spas. There's a whole fitness area you could maybe tap into because you'll have onboard gyms. Then you've got all of the food and the cocktails. I mean, cruise in itself, before you even add in the itineraries and the ports of call, is a really interesting subject matter that people might want to think about. But then there's another one you might that people might be interested in, which could be um, you know the changing face of I don't know maybe long haul holidays. So yeah. the fact that we've now got and, and it's really key for us are our, our new planes, our seven eight seven planes, which are fantastic. They're not called Dreamliners for nothing. And oh my God, I've seen pictures of the lights going on. Yeah, they're fantastic. fantastic. It's like a, it's like a disco. It's amazing <laughs> as you take off. The cabin crew set these, they're called mood lights, and they kind of shimmer down the aisle. But it's like you're in, in this really cool kind of funky, like, Studio 54 disco. It's amazing. It really kind of sets, sets your tone to, um, to high for holiday. Um, but th there's another thing, you know, how, how, how travel has changed or how luxury travel is presented now. That, I mean, that, that could be another idea. There's all sorts of different routes in. Definitely. And I just think there's so much flexibility. You literally go around the world. There are very few places that you can't go. So you could go somewhere very traditional. You could go to Florida, you yeah. could to Disney, you could do the Everglades, you can do the other things that people do in Florida. Um, but but on, that, on that point, that's a really good one to point out there. So say, for example, uh, we, we have really good working relationships with lots of, of I call them mummy bloggers. Um, yeah. And, you know, if you want to choose a, a family destination and kind of road test it, I mean, there's, that, there's loads of appetite for that kind of thing. Or, I don't know, an, another idea that people might want to take away and then mould and fashion into their own sort of thing could be, you mentioned Florida. Okay, most families when they go to Florida have a tick sheet of we're going to go to, to Disney, we're going to go to Universal, um, we're going to go to what, you know all of the big parks, etc., and the attractions. What about if you to say, right, Florida with a family, but the side of Florida you've never seen before, and, and what you're going to go away is uncovering the, the hidden side that, 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 that no one really knows about, that people would never ever think of. Yeah, definitely. Like thrift shops, the fashion, the outlet shopping. Like I know Nikki, your partner in crime, you went to Florida and bought everything. She's a shopaholic. I, in fact, I'm, I'm surprised there's anything left in Florida. After yeah, you might trip. be disappointed if you pitch for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, there are so many different stories to tell. I know one of the things that I am planning to pitch, and if anyone pitches this, I will get you. Um, but my, I have family who live in Indonesia. Now, I'm planning to pitch um, a trip to either India or Thailand, and then to include in that, um, leaving that space, booking my own flights, going out to Indonesia, seeing my family, and then coming back to, and you know incorporating like how flexible booking holidays this way can be because you know we've been kind of polarized into either you book a package or you go independent actually you can mix the two and i think that that's quite exciting when you're talking about what's what's a three hour flight away from thailand pretty yeah. much anywhere in the far east and that's really interesting what you say there because i got to go with thompson at the beginning of uh, last year so roughly this time where are we now we've gone Yes, flown. Um, no, so, so so January last year, I got to go to Thailand with Thompson, and I got to fly out on the Dreamliner, amazing. And I did precisely that. So um, I based in a Thompson, what's called a small and friendly hotel, which are really um, they're smaller family run hotels, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they, 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 they've got an intimacy and a really nice local vibe um, about them. And what's also quite nice about small and friendly is that they're really reasonably priced, so they don't cost the earth. So I was able to kind of base myself in a small and friendly hotel, but exactly like you were saying there, I then took advantage of where I was in the world in Thailand, because Thailand's local airlines are so good, I was able to go up to 
Bangkok for, for, for a couple of days. I then flew down to another part of Thailand and, and checked out Krabi while I, while I was there. And so I was able to actually almost have a mini tour, but in a totally different way that I had never thought possible before. Definitely. I mean, when we, um, you know, taking it off, off Thompson and on to May, because that's the most important thing, um, when we were at for my cousin's wedding in Indonesia, I was like, well, we're in the neighborhood. So we went to Cambodia, we went to Malaysia. You know, we really, really packed it in. And, we, you know, we saw orangutans in the jungle. We exactly. saw firsthand the palm oil industry. And it, I think it really changes your mind about a place. But the flights internally and the flights in between countries in the East were really simple and really affordable. So I think, like, if you're going to pitch something like that, obviously don't because I'm pitching it. But if you're going to pitch something like that, um you know think about what else there is in the area what other things are people going to be interested in definitely and you know i'm, I'm just thinking um about uh even if you were to take somewhere quite uh thompson traditional so say tenerife the canary islands um i just had a thought there or, or one of the nearby islands like la palma or gran canaria <laughs> All of them are really, really well known, for example, for stargazing. They've got some of the world's best um, observatories. So you could even find something about the destination that, uh, that may not even be your speciality. It might not even be something we've talked in the, earlier on about oh, if you're a foodie blogger or if you're really into style, you might want to take your own specialism as part of, of what you want to talk about and pitch about. Like the increased fashion, for example. But, but you could do something totally different that's outside of your normal sphere of enjoyment or, or what kind of floats your boat. And, and so let's take the Canary Islands. And you might not have a, a particular passion about astronomy, but go along, see what happens there. And, and has, has that twisted your view on it? And, you know, are, 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 are you now going to wax lyrical about, you know, the next time a shooting star comes over? I don't know. It, travel does that. It kind of opens doors and opens opens your mind to things you perhaps haven't even thought you might like or enjoy so as well as your own specialism think about things that are totally new and, and diverse to you that, that might get you fired up so take yourself out of your comfort zone absolutely, That's absolutely. A really good tip. Um, when it comes to the storytelling of your trip um you know photography is going to play, play an important part in that yeah what are you looking for when it comes to people's photography either on instagram or on their blog Okay, I, I think it's worth just caveating that. Uh, you're absolutely right. Photography is really, really good for us and really beneficial for us. So if, if, if we can get that out of your, your experience, that's great. But I know some bloggers, you know, that's not their expertise. And to a certain extent, I'd say, if you fall into that camp, don't worry, because I've actually got back at HQ a photography and video team who can... Um, you can help you if, if, if photography is not your your where you if, if you're not au okay fait with, with what to do or, or how to great good get good photography then we've got people who will be able to supplant things or help you know choose uh, photos to complement your posts however more often than not most bloggers these days are into their photography as well so if that is you or if you're into to, to film so much the better and i guess what we're looking for there um and i would you know, I'm sure our photography team would say the same sorts of things. Um, we want the sorts of shots and the sorts of things that get traction when we look at um, our kind of stats that come in from social media are the ones, without a shadow of a doubt, um, that either make people go, oh, I just want to be there now. So we're talking those fabulous, fabulous beach scenes, those fabulous scenery, that fabulous scenery or I know a, a shot of a temple where you just go oh that's amazing I want to be there I need to tick that off or what really does very well and again you see loads of this on Instagram and it does well for a reason it's because it is inspiring and captivating I really um, tight close-ups and that works particularly well for um, for food and for drinks the other thing I'd say is um, my hot tip that I learned when I went to Thailand and also to Mauritius is um, and, I know, and I know it always feels cliche, but it, we're all so nosy about everyone else's lives. It still works a treat. Unpack your key things and yeah. take the, the, the aerial shot of what you're going to be taking. Because everyone wants to know what's in everyone else's luggage and what haven't I got? What gadget haven't I got? What should oh, I have? I mean, your, um, your socket 
your um i would say it's like a sonic socket that can yeah. do every plug in the world yeah it's like doctor who's <laughs> plug <Brilliant. Yeah. laughs> it's okay. fantastic i mean it's little things like that that are, are kind of travel nuggets of gold so i found this this adapter plug that works literally anywhere in the world um and it's like a swiss army knife of the plug world so those sorts of things where you lay out what you're taking um away with you are brilliant and always get people talking and inspired and you know sometimes it's just really good advice and that's what people are after as well and if you're taking children like laying out what you what you're taking in the cabin and whether it works um i know that somebody who's watching the chat right now flew to new zealand with her children on her own and you know she had her strategy and they survived i was quite impressed i have to say hello heather um and somebody's asking where I've gone. I should be in a little square at the bottom of your screen. If I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm a disembodied voice. I promise I have very nice lipstick on so, and I'm smiling a lot. So um, if you can't see me, I do apologize, but this is all about Christian and Thompson. Um, so I would like to talk about a couple of the pitfalls that people want to watch out for. So a few of the things that aren't going to work, that have been done before, um, the kind isn't going to be helpful let's talk about some of that so i'm going to um, feed you one right now okay. i would like to go to morocco again nobody picked this this is mine um so <laughs> i'm joking i'm joking i would like to go to morocco and i can see you only fly from manchester you know could i get a flight somewhere else as part of my trip would that work okay um wherever we can we will work with people to see what we can do however i i guess my advice would be people need to be realistic about what magic wand we have to wave um obviously uh what we're really proud about is one of the reasons that we're we're really um we've got great um sustainability kind of credentials is our flights go out nearly almost all the time full so they are and inverted commas, as green as you can get flying to be. Um, and so if an airport or seats are full up, they're full up because they've been booked. And I guess as well, one of the other things I'd, I'd mention, this is quite a handy tip, is um, Gatwick is one of our main bases in the UK, no surprise, you know, it's one of the main London airports. So majority of our programmes will be connected to Gatwick. You mentioned Manchester then. Manchester is actually another good one to kind of maybe um, plump for because it, it, we've got a big presence and likewise most of the big cities. But I guess if, if you're you know thinking about one of the more regional airports um, like Norwich and you're insistent, no, I can only fly out of Norwich, we might not be able to make that happen. Number yeah. of reasons. Number one, it might be booked up because everyone who lives in Norwich is straight in and they book up the flight seats. Also, we might not even fly out of that part of the world because our main bases are London or, or the north of, uh, of the country. So that's that's something to really be aware of. When you guys are doing your research, when you're looking at the destinations, plug in a few dates, see which airports they go from. Because if, you know, if you're in Scotland and you don't really want to fly from Gatwick or you want to include, um, you know, that in your planning of your trip you need to think about the short hop down before you get on the main flight with Thompson. Absolutely or even have a look to see where we fly out of from like maybe Glasgow or Aberdeen what would actually work for you then yeah. think about think about the routes that we go from from there um, so for example off the top of my head I don't think we fly out of Glasgow currently um, to Costa Rica so if Costa Rica's the really key thing for you, you're going to have to think about maybe, right, I'm going to have to pitch down to, to, to Gatwick. If the real key thing for you, or maybe or even your pitch idea is how I can fly from my doorstep, in which case yeah. your whole point of your pitch would be about what you can do from Aberdeen or Glasgow or something along those lines. So you use the search functions to see what's local to you and what's not. That's, that's brilliant advice. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the content of the pitch, this is going to be... I think the biggest um, pivot point. Um, so we want we want to make sure that people have original and creative ideas. Give us a few examples of things that have been done to death and are probably not going to pass the muster. Okay, um, so, so some classics um, that I constantly get. You know, I get a lot of kind of what I call cold calling or cold emailing um, from bloggers um, and. It's almost as if they're hitting me with stock press. I thought of the best idea in the history of the world ever. 
and I'm just like, oh God, if only I'd had a pound for every time someone else has suggested exactly the same idea. So this is something to bear in mind. So um, what I often get are what I call the really uh, loose um, ideas. So, oh, I could do a, a um, what's best to eat in Mallorca guide yeah i've probably done that we've probably got it on our blog already and i've probably had it suggested to me 500 times before what might be better there is if you get more specific so i don't know um let's choose turkey and uh you know famous for the kebab hummus that kind of thing maybe what you're doing there you need to be more specific is um, not just, oh, best places to eat out in Turkey, it's the uh, food is guide to the best kebabs in da da da. I don't know, try yeah. to break it down. Um, well, or, like the Michelin restaurants or bringing local recipes. I think, you know, something exactly. like that. Exactly. About like traditional kebabs. Kebabs have such a bad image in this country, but actually they are delicious. They're and fantastic and they're not given the kind of due respect that they should be and, and that people don't love them as much as they should be, should do. Or maybe something in Italy, I don't know, the, the Coffee Connoisseur's Guide to uh, the top five coffee shops in Sorrento. That's the kind of things that really get traction when you're more specific, when you've got the really broad oh, brushstrokes, it tends free not guide to work. To like Say again, sorry? Maybe like a gluten-free guide to Venice, so super niche, but... Perfect. Sorry. Perfect. Or how to, how, how to eat out in, you know, family friendly Mallorca with the pickiest child on the planet something like that you know might might get other people fired up who, who share a same passion or, or share a same problem as well definitely I mean you so, know that I think that does hold a lot of people back is worrying about you know what their children will eat whereas I know from being in Spain that most Spanish chefs will come out and hold your baby for you and then they'll cook something specially for them as well. Absolutely, and the same goes for, you know, Italy and Greece, They, it's embracing family. So there's all sorts of different a a avenues and angles. And I would say the ones I would steer clear of are the broad brush strokes. Yeah. They don't really do anything and they don't really inspire people. The more specific and the more niche you can get, so much the better. Definitely. and. Let's talk a bit about your destinations. We're about to get onto the Q&A in a minute, guys. I can see we've got some really great questions there already. Add all your questions in the Q&A. Really sorry the chat function doesn't seem to be working. Um, it's just me in there, um, which is very boring. Um, so add your questions onto the Q&A. Um, if you have something you want to say that's not a question, direct it to Kat on Twitter, and she will text it to me if, it, if it's something that I need to know. Um, she's already texting me that she wants to go to Iceland. So, you know, that that's working. Um, so let's talk about some of the destinations. Okay. Have you got any that you guys are particularly um, keen to book trips to? Yeah, I guess um, places that are new to us. Like Costa Rica? Like Costa Rica, Mauritius, mm. Thailand. Um, we've got a new part of Mexico that we're now flying to called Puerto Vallarta. So we, we for a long time, and you know, we're kind of masters of, of the Caribbean coast of Mexico, yeah. where you find um, the Riviera Maya and Cancun. But what we're also doing now is flying right the way over to the other side of Mexico, to the Pacific coast of Puerto Vallarta. And this is a really different side of Mexico that I don't really think many people necessarily know too much about, but it's where you find all the coffee plantations, uh, mountains really close to the sea, and a really, really, traditional colorful um mexican way of life um so that's a really interesting one for us we've mentioned iceland i mean that for me is the one that's got me the most excited in terms of where i'm going to be heading off myself on a thompson holiday because yes oh. i do get perks but, that, <laughs> but that's where i'm planning to to to, to spend my perk um coming up in my uh, head i'm always like how can i get on this and film a time lapse you know like a time lapse in iceland is a dream no, you know, I, I will buy every single you know millimeter per hour moving kit. I think you know that that kind of thing would be really strong. Um, and, what I, and what I think about something on Iceland, I'm just you know, it, someone might want to take this away as, as a bare bones idea and then work it up because I haven't really thought it through. But taking Iceland as an example, um, what's really interesting about what we offer, and this goes back to being your homework about our our product lineup is with Iceland and I thought well, how am I going to pack for this I have no idea because on the one hand it's a 
cold place by definition, and we're going there in the winter months. So I'm thinking some sort of a snowy ensemble. I haven't really worked it out. On the flip side, one of the key places that everyone kind of wants to go to and see is the famous Blue Lagoon, which is yeah. geothermal, um, bubbling, kind of near and it, geezer and it kind of place. Swimsuit, won't it? It rocks your swimsuit. Uh, and, and it's, so you need to almost cater for the two extremes. So I've got on the one hand, you know, I'm, I, I've got my, my bathers. On the other hand, I, I'm, I'm in my sarpet. So that might be something interesting that people might want to explore. If, if you're thinking about Iceland in particular. Um, trying to think about when I went to Mauritius, some of the things that really surprised me. So um, aside from the kind of tropical beach thing, one of the things that really knocked me over was the, um, it, it, it's called uh, the Colourful Isle or, or the Island of a Thousand Colours. It's got lots of different nicknames, but they all kind of point back to colour. Um, and one of the things that really, struck me were the um was the flora and fauna so yeah. that in itself might be something is it like the i don't know i'm not even sure what the term is but almost like the botanist's guide to the yeah i don't know there's all sorts almost like a spring watch from mauritius <laughs> idea i don't know there's all sorts of things you can come up with and i remember when i was um in costa rica i saw weird and wonderful animals and butterflies and birds I didn't even know existed. So there might be something around that that people want to tick off as well. And what's really good about Costa Rica, I think, because that's one that I've been to and is I find really exciting, um, is we've got a really good tour program going on over there. Um, and one of my favorites, because I got to visit this while I was out there, was the rainforest tour. Oh, and, wow. um, sorry, let me correct myself. It's better than rainforest. You thought rainforest was good? <laughs> like this, it's a cloud forest. So oh my goodness. it's actually a, rain, it, it's a type of rainforest which extends so high up it goes into the into the clouds. So the canopies um, of the trees are all threaded with what I call the Ewok village. Um, these yes. kind of suspension bridges that take you across the tops of the trees, but through clouds. So there's all sorts of crazy stuff out there that people could be talking about, um, aside from just traditional beach although i want to make this clear there is nothing wrong with talking about traditional beach everybody particularly loves everyone loves the beach and i don't know again another crazy idea is there something around you know rock pooling with your kids about what to look yeah. out for in mallorca i don't know there's all sorts of different things so whether it is somewhere that's really out there and different like um costa rica or if it's somewhere totally tropical like Jamaica or the Dominican Republic, or whether it's somewhere nearer to home, um, uh, you know, whether it's Greek food, Italian food, Spanish food, there are so many things that you just need to find that twist on how you can make it really specific and really niche. I'm going to throw an idea out there because I know a lot of our attendees, probably about half of our attendees, do have children. Mm -hmm. um, how would you guys feel about a mix of adult and child generated content? Ah, okay, no, definitely up for that. Um, it's quite an interesting one. Um, we did a little experiment um, with uh, something similar when we did our out of office outreach program at, um, I think it was last year or the year before. Um, and we worked with um, a blogger called Who's the Mummy? And uh, oh, say again? Sally. Yes, Sally. yes, yeah. yeah. And um, she actually went away uh, with her daughter, and her daughter did some blogging for us as well. Um, and that was really exciting because actually where we 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 we, we sent her was um which we went to a few places actually but one of them that really I, I think her daughter really enjoyed was um we sent her to um thompson's sister company to first choices um mm -hmm. holiday village and uh, while she was there the saturdays we were working with on a on a like an advertising campaign turned up and did a, what we call a surprise and delight for our customers while they happened to be there so she got to meet the saturdays and she got to blog about that and it was it, it was a great piece of content but that wasn't the only thing she did well i think we also sent her to mauritius if my memory they did some paragliding or yeah something like absolutely they, they they got some gopro footage of them parasailing um, and her and her little girl wrote um, eight 
top things you need to know about Mauritius from an eight-year-old or really inspired stuff, really yeah. clever. But yeah, again, we're really open to different ideas, um, different takes. I mean, it could be if, if your pitch is about, you know, going away with, with your family, and maybe it's an intergenerational family. So through the eyes of Gran, through the eyes of Dad, through the eyes of Mom, through the eyes of the kids. Or right. maybe, I don't know what your family makeup might be. I think that's a really interesting spin and take on things that people would be interested in, in reading and sharing. Definitely. And I do think, you know, um, I love Sally Tibet, so I think she's wonderful at what she does. Mm -hmm. If you guys want ideas about travel blogging, if you're a bit nervous about how you work that into your normal blog, go and have a look at Sally's site. She goes on a lot of trips and she writes a lot of great content. I certainly enjoy reading it myself. So we're going to move on to taking some questions now. And the first one is staying with families. So we want to know if you have limits on how many people can go on one trip. Um, you know, I'm the same as Carrie here. I have a family of five. I know we've discussed this, it's an awkward number. Is that too big or is it something you guys will consider? No, um, if, if the idea that goes with the pitch sustains us to send five people away, absolutely. Um, and also, I mean, might the idea there be, how do I travel when I've got the odd number of five? What's the best way to go away? Or uh, the how do you make sure you book into connecting rooms? I don't know, there, there, there could be something about the quirk or the difficulty that um, what was the name of, of the person who sent that question in? Um, Carrie from Space with Butterflies. Okay, yeah, so, so Carrie might um, want to actually utilise the problem that she encounters sometimes and find a solution to it that then is shared with other people. So we'd be open to that. What I'd say is, you know, although I'm not going to say no to anything at this point because we never know what people might come up with, but if you're saying, yeah, hi, I'm a family of 20, we might not be able to deal with that. You know, there, there might be a limit to, 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 to what we can pull together. But I'm, I'm always intrigued by particularly the, when people are going away with families, is one of the recurring things that I get asked about. I remember, Kat, you were asking me about, oh, how do I how, how do I get away with, you know, how do I go away, what's the best we had we had a long chat one night about you know what a nightmare it is to book for a family of five, and I did notice that you know the hotels with um, bigger rooms and interconnecting rooms they book up quickly, so that's definitely an angle to take. I do Absolutely, but no, we, we we wouldn't discount anything or anyone um, so long as it fits with the pitch and 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 the idea itself is solid and and has really good legs and it's something that we think would work. Brilliant. So um, Lauren um, asked, will bloggers from outside of the UK, for example, Ireland, be able to work with Thompson? Absolutely. Um, we have a presence in Ireland. Um, Thompson um, in both uh, the Republic and in Northern Ireland um, is there as, as our first choice. Um, in Ireland, um, if was it Lauren, did you say there? Lauren. Yeah, Lauren. Um, in the Republic of Ireland, um, our main brand um, that uh, we operate as is called Falcon, as in the bird. Um, yeah. It's the number one kind of uh, travel brand in Ireland, and, and that's part of Thompson. Um, and actually, Thompson itself as a brand is available as well. Marvellous. There we go, Lauren. Very, very happy about that, I'm, I'm imagining. And so Catherine asks, and if Christian, if you um, hover your mouse over the right of your screen, you should see these questions coming up. So, um, Catherine asks, is it just a verbal pitch within your two minutes, or can you bring along digital aids and electronic examples? Um, I would say, I, I'm not going to lead people down what their pitch can be. Um, it's up to you. Um, it's up to, it's whatever you feel the most confident and at home and at ease doing but why not if your natural environment isn't necessarily talking or typing if it is actually uh, generating video and you've got an idea that is best displayed to us via video then sure why not um we're totally open to however however anybody wants to present things whatever formats if you just want to come and talk to us that's fine if you want to come and actually present something then then great you know we're open to, to the whole shaman okay so heather has um a question and she would like to know she has two questions so we're gonna, i'm going to ask them both together number one can we pitch more than one idea 
Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to answer that first or do you want to do both? Yeah, go and answer that first. Okay. Um, my gut feeling is you're probably best off pitching one idea. I can't tell you how quickly two minutes disappears when you're having a conversation with people. And remember, during that two minutes, not only do you have to factor in some time to talk to us about what your idea is, we might even have a couple of questions for you to say, okay, so how many people are you thinking of? Or um, how would you think this would work? Or what type of content could you get, you know, supplementary to what you, you sort of, there? there might be some, you know, some banter between us both going on at that point, and two minutes flies by. I, but on the flip side of that, I don't want to put any limits in place in terms of what people do or don't do. Um, it's, it's up to you guys. Um, you know, we want to engage with you. you want, we want uh, you to engage with us. So whatever you feel works the best. But I would just say from my own personal experience when I've had to do similar sorts of things at, at work as like an elevator pitch for an idea for a blog post, whatever, two minutes flies yeah. by and you might yeah. do yourself yeah. more justice by just focusing on the one idea you one thing and do it well yeah she also wants to know she's feeling a bit nervous um will other people be able to watch now i can kind of answer this it is going to be in a public space within the building yeah. so yeah there's no curtain drawn around you there's no whispering people will be able to watch they can't nick your ideas because you've already got them out there yeah. Um, but yes, you do have to steal yourself that the people waiting to pitch will be able to see what you're saying. They will. They'll be able to see. I wouldn't necessarily know that they'd be, I don't think um, that they'll be able to necessarily hear what you're saying. Ah, because, so you're going to have them stand a bit further back. Yeah, our, our plan, and obviously, you know, we'll work, we'll find out if this actually happens on the day. Um, but our plan currently is that um, we'll kind of get people to kind of come and talk to us and we'll receive people in one area if everyone wants to do a pitch but then the people as we do the pitches will actually take to the airline seats and sit down and, and we'll do that quickly and get people churning through as quickly as we can so we can see as many people as we can throughout the day um, yeah, but about 300 bloggers there and i can't imagine that many people don't want to pitch a holiday exactly. and so what we're trying to do is get people to sit down with us so that it feels a little bit more private i guess lovely so um, we have a question about destinations. Mm -hmm. Hester has been researching her destinations and she's come across Thompson Tailor Made worldwide. Yeah. Yeah. Is this a different company or is this part of you guys? Is this Okay, yeah, yeah, all right. Um, I'm really glad, was it Hester did you say? Hester. Thanks for this, this is really important, this is really good. Um, Thompson Tailor Made is absolutely part of um, Thompson, um, however, the way that we're structured as a business means that um, the bit that um, I work for and the bit that we could be coming to visit Blogtacular is the main part of Thompson that I guess everyone knows and loves in terms of uh, beach holidays where we are part of a package. Um, Thompson Taylor Made is, is, uh, is part of us, but it, it deals with uh, scheduled airlines and pieced together itineraries and tours and um, a la carte kind of hotel selection as opposed to something that we've already put together. Um, so my advice would be is to steer clear of that. That's actually operated by a totally different um, set of people. They won't be there on the day. And the other one maybe to just be aware of is our other sister company. It's called Thompson Lakes and Mountains. And again, that's right. operated by a whole set of different people who are specialists in that field and they won't be there on the day either. So we are the main Thompson entity. And if you're wondering what that means in terms of the product lines or the destinations, it would be www.thompson.co.uk. That's the one, that's the portal to go to to find out where we represent. So thompson.co.uk. That said, that said, if you would like to, uh, if your particular thing is uh, lakes and mountains holidays or if uh, you're all about really high-end, super luxe travel. I'm sure um, the guys at Lakes and Mountains and at Taylor may be interested in hearing from you, but you'd have to go to them direct um, and, and kind of pick up with them, as opposed to us who are on the day are dealing with the majority of, of what people know as Thompson, which is thompson.co.uk and, and that destination package. Lovely. So we have a question from Catherine. 
is there a specific time frame in which you need to travel? Could it be next spring rather than this summer? Um, no. Uh, I, I, I guess from our point of view, being totally selfish, we'd like to try and work with you as soon as possible. But um, no, we'll certainly be open to um, when it is you would want to go or could go. I mean, part of that rationale might be part bound up in your idea. So if you're thinking about Iceland and Northern Lights hunting, well, that only happens um, in the winter months and into next year. Um, likewise, we don't launch Costa Rica until November um, this year. Um, so some of the things that you might choose um, as part of your pitch idea might by definition only operate later in either this year or even into next year. So, or it might be that your whole pitch idea is about uh, winter sun in some yeah. capacity, in which case, by, again, by definition, you've already set your time frame. Or it could be if your family, if you're a family and your idea is about how, you know, how to make the most of options during the don't take your kids out of uh, school holidays, because I know that's a real issue. Um, <laughs> maybe that could be something. So school holidays are not off limits for these pictures. You're happy to send people in the holiday. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. This is why we love you guys. You know, you're so like this is such a generous program. I think you know this is exclusive to Blogtacular. If you haven't already bought your ticket, I can see a couple of tickets have gone this evening. As we've been talking, gold star to those people who bought them. Um, you know, this is a mega opportunity to pitch for a holiday, to transform how you're blogging, to add some travel into your repertoire. And, you know, if you've got a family, it's an even better offer. Um, but if you're a couple, you have couples only retreats, don't you? Absolutely, yeah. Um, in fact, in April, we've just launched um, a new program called Sensimar, which are um, adults only hotels. So um, it could be that you don't have kids. It could be you've got kids, but you've uh, let gran and granddad uh, step in and look after them for a week while you know you get away and enjoy some some couple time but it could be you're an empty nester and you know your kids are, are grown up and, and it's all about you and your other half and Sense Samar is all about that it's about adults focused holidays where children aren't part of, uh, of, of, of the puzzle I guess so uh, yeah, that, that, that could be something that people focus on. So we have a question from Emma at Messy Notebook um, and she is a new blogger. She doesn't have as many views or followers as more established bloggers. Okay. She was really keen. You know, is it worth her coming to pitch to you? Absolutely, absolutely. As I said earlier on, the the thing is, we are all about the content that's generated. That's the most important element for us. Um, and remember, we've got a big, big blog that, you know, we attract 400,000 on average every month. Wow. So it could be the other way around that, you know, our blog is the outlet for you. Um, but what's, but, but where we're kind of, uh, kind of the symbiotic relationship that's working for you is that you get amazing exposure as a relatively new blogger with a big brand that's well known within the travel industry and kind of sets you up with some blogging travel credentials. Um, but on the flip side, we're getting, although you, you might not have great uh, readers or, or following back, what you might have is the ideas that no one else is coming up with and also the great content um, ideas that no one else is, 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 is actually putting out there. And it's always worth remembering to every single blogger, you know, my first posts are still online somewhere. My first pictures on Instagram are still on Instagram. You know, with search and Pinterest, these things remain discoverable forever. So it might be that right now you're not a huge blogger, but you have huge potential. Absolutely. And, and companies are going to want to work with you because that's evergreen content. You know, if you're writing a really, really great guide to the clubs in Jamaica, that is going to be something people search for. If you have um, a map Pinterest board attached to that, that's going to be something that, you know, really builds content that gets engagement. And it's something that companies are going to look for. So I'd say never be put off, but you know, you have your no already. You and exactly. You've got nothing to lose by coming and having a chat with us. Yeah. Absolutely nothing to lose. And I, and I guess the other thing there is we are really conscious of the fact that everyone has to start somewhere um, with, with blogging and social media in general. Um, you know, I blog in my spare time when I'm not doing it at work. 
And, you know, I remember in my early days of blogging, where I used to sit in my stats and go, mm, mm. but bit by bit by bit by bit, and the more you do and, and the more people you talk to and the more people you work with, the more exposure you get and, and, and you can watch it balloon and, and rock it that way. Definitely. Do you think it's worth people including their stats and um, follower numbers in their pitch? Would that be relevant to you or is it I, less important? I, I would say um, if you think that's a, a, a something that could sway us, i.e. You're, you've got serious follower figures and, you know, because as a brand, we're always interested in seeing, you know, how we, can we talk to lots of people yeah. as well and, you know, let, let's not beat around the bush. Um, but do that if that's to the benefit of your of your pitch. If 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 you are new and you're fledgling and rather green at it all, but you've got some really great content ideas, focus in on what you're strong on, which is the content ideas. And remember, the other thing I'd say to people who are relatively maybe new to 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 blogging is the world is incredibly fickle and. Um, things move incredibly quickly. And although there are some really big established names out there who it would seem we're always going to do very well, things shift around and people are always after the next new thing. And the way that social media is by definition, we're after the constant, a constant stream of newness. So if you have got the new ideas, put those out there. Yeah, definitely. And you know, a tip from me, I really, I don't want to hear any bloggers apologizing during their pitches or saying they are not good enough. You go in there and definitely you know own your ideas own your figures own what you do as an individual because it is so strong and be proud of what you're you're doing whether you know you're an established blogger with huge readership or if you're just starting out be proud of what it is you're doing be proud of your voice remember brands not just thompson but brands generally i remember last year when we were talking to one of your previous sponsors with being q they were saying very similar things as big brands, we want to um, work with you because you have a voice that we don't. And whether your voice is um, already out there and it's really loud, or if it's a, a small one that's growing, that's something that we, we want to, to, to kind of harness and work with you. I love, I love being to you, I have to say as an aside. I think they're really innovative in how they work with bloggers. You know, they have a very everyday brand that's been around forever and ever, and we all use it. Um, but the way they give bloggers freedom and the way they connect with them, you know, some of um, some really innovative content came out of their involvement last year. And Sarah Louise, who is our next question, um, you know, did a beautiful like crochet lamp extension with one of their lamps. And I, I'd never thought of buying a lamp at being cute before, but it made me look at it in a whole different way. And that that is down to the strength of their PR team. And Thanks. also, I mean, talking about just building connections. Um, not only did we meet last year some great um, bloggers, and we've got some, we, we forged some great working relationships with, with, with bloggers at Blogtacular. I know the PR team at, at BQ now, so it, it's a it, it, it's it's amazing how things can all come together. I mean, that might even be a pitch idea. There is okay. It's not just Thompson. We might do the travel bit, but your pitch might be how you team up with uh, Topshop in order to put together a particular outfits. So try and think as, as broadly as you can when you're coming up with those ideas, because you know, from last year, I'm already good. working with some. Yeah. Oh, you're freezing up a little bit, Christian, or I am, one of us is. So nothing is off limits there. You can pitch multi-brand, you can pitch anything. Um, Sarah Louise would like to know, is there a limit to the duration of the stay? Is there a, a of, the, of, of the trip that they go on? Yeah. Ah, now, this is another interesting one when people put their pitch idea together. Um, it could be that what you're wanting to do is highlighting something that um, we aren't necessarily famous for. We, you know, Everyone knows you can go away for a 7 or a 14 night holiday. We also do loads of 3 nighters, 4 nighters, the bizarre 10 and 11 nighters, which often suit families in particular, and then we actually go beyond that. So if your pitch idea is is actually the the flesh of it is about different types of duration then maybe that's something you want to play with um whether it be a short duration and that might be something interesting because we've found out through research that increasingly people are taking more and more short three and four nights of holidays as opposed to the traditional long two weeker 
Um, yeah, so, definitely what we do. I don't think since we've had children, we've ever been away for two weeks. So it, it might be an interesting angle. So the duration could actually be what underpins your idea, if that makes sense. Definitely. Um, can we pitch multi-destination ideas? Um, I would say if that fits within our program, then yes. So if you were to look at, um, I'm just trying to think where we've, we've got places like that. We often, uh, I think it, don't quote me on this because my memory of our complete product knowledge is, uh, destination list is, is not as good as it probably should be. But I think we do, for example, um, uh, Sri Lanka and Kerala in India. Ooh. So if, if, if you can find a set where you've got multi-destinations that we actually offer, then yes, by all means. Um, what I probably steer clear of is, is kind of saying, um, I don't know, Thailand plus Cambodia, because currently we don't do Cambodia, unless it might be a long idea we discussed earlier where, you know, I, you I'm facing in, you know, I, and how do I jet out, but then jet back? That might be something you could do. And of course, if you want to go to lots of places, cruises are what you should be checking out. Oh, they're brilliant. I'm, I was never sure about, if I'm, you know, being totally honest, I was never sure about cruises until I went on one. It is one of the best ways to road test places that you perhaps wouldn't normally think about going to, or a kind of, you know, number 25 on your, on your bus. Yeah. Um, it's a great way of seeing a load of different places in a really short, uh, short amount of time. And what I found is, from having done cruises, is, um, that often there may be one or two places where I didn't even think I really want to, you know, didn't they weren't didn't register with me, but I've subsequently gone back as a result of just having a day in port because I love the place so much. So an example of that for me was Aruba. Um, got to visit it on a cruise and then I went back. Um, I had no idea it's actually part of the Netherlands. Um, the Netherlands yeah. is, is not just kind of the Netherlands of Europe, Holland, it's also got a set of islands in the Caribbean which are part of the Netherlands. So when you go there, you're in Holland. It's quite, oh. quite bizarre. And all of the architecture is kind of like Amsterdam. So a cruise is a great way to make you look at a, a different set of places perhaps you never even considered. Brilliant. Well, thanks for that question, Lucy. I have one more. Um, this is from somebody who's not attending Blogtacular but would also like to pitch you. Is that possible or is this a Blogtacular exclusive? Well, th this particular drive is a Blogtacular exclusive and I, I don't think it would be really fair to, you know, extend it out to, to everybody. That said, I, I said earlier on, we get a lot of cold callers. Um, people can always do that, you know, they could do that tomorrow if they wanted. However, there is nothing like being able to meet us face to face and 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 speaking to us um, it, uh, the majority if I'm being totally honest the majority of all of our uh, blogger connections um, over the last couple of years have come out of um, events like Blogtacular so last year was brilliant for us um, we also we sponsored a few other things like the Cosmopolitan Blog Awards that's where uh, by meeting people face to face I got this exchange and I also get a, a feeling of do you get us? Do Are you the sort of people we would want to work with? Have you got a similar sort of voice to us? Can I hear my customers engaging with you? And that takes a lot longer to establish if you're doing the cold caller route as opposed to just coming and seeing us and, and being there. So my advice would be, if you're not going to Blogtacular, you ought to be going to Blogtacular and get yourself a ticket, then you can come and see us as well, as well as extending your network within the, the blog community and the guys there are fantastic. I've made friends, I, I'm hoping, for life as a result of Blogtacular. <laughs> well, we are Facebook friends and I have a rule that if somebody wouldn't invite me over for dinner, they should not be my Facebook friend. Absolutely. Um, so we I, said this, didn't we? We said about how, which elements of social media do you allow people into? And yeah, yeah you, you're on my Facebook, there's some others from Blogtacular, so I think that, that, that says quite a lot about how it can bring people together. and. You know, we're talking about a, 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 a brand and a blogger exchange here. It does go beyond that. You know, I've, I've met genuine friends as a result of Blogtacular and some of the other events that I've been to in a brand capacity.
this is brilliant and like i we we could talk all night and we probably would um, <laughs> I, i'm conscious that we are now 15 minutes over the end of our webinar and you have to go to sleep um, there's lots of other people out there watching um you know we've gone through most of the questions uh, we have a couple more you know about you know i'm a solo blogger can i pitch with my blogging partner absolutely yes and you guys aren't interested in just the traditional family or just the traditional couple you want to show how holidays can you know, be experienced by everyone um will the pitch be filmed well we have got filming on site um but thompson themselves are not filming so no we no we, we, we won't be filming ourselves so don't let that put you off um and also i i i, I can just delay anyone's fears there. Although there will be the official Blogtacular camera crew there, I guess. I didn't even notice them last year. I was too in-depth in conversation and, and meeting people. You, you don't even know that they're there. Editing you, Christian, was hilarious from the video last year. You're one of the funniest people. And, you know, it's a total pleasure to be working with you guys again. I think this offer to our attendees is fantastic. We probably have about 13 or 12 tickets left now. Um, you know, if you want to pitch a holiday, come along to the event, tell your friends about it if you've already got a ticket. Um, you know, we are going to sell out in the next day or so. It's going to happen. I can just feel it. Um, and yeah, Thompson are going to be there. They're going to have a plane. They're going <laughs> to have a trolley. They're going to be dollies. They're going to be wearing their hats. You can dress we'll, up. We'll be showing you the emergency <laughs> exits. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, just feel at ease with them because they're an incredibly friendly team. Their interest is in sending people on holiday. So if you don't ask, you definitely won't be going on holiday. But if you do ask, the chances are you might go on a holiday. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that most of us could do the holiday right now. Oh, gosh, yes. Me included. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to everyone who joined us tonight. And thank you to Christian. We will email out the link to this so that if you want to watch it back again and take all of the tips from Christian, all the ideas about destinations, like the various half-baked pitches that the two of us have thrown around this evening, um, except for any of my pitches, I'm watching you. Um, no, get in on that um, link again. We will write a blog post after this as well to um, round it all up. Um, but yes, going to see you all at Blogtacular. It's going to be brilliant. Thank you for coming. And thank you so much, Christian, for your evening. You're very welcome. And thanks for everyone to, to kind of uh, dropping in on us. I hope it's helpful. And I really look forward to meeting everyone at Blogtacular. Brilliant. See you next week. Ah! <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.